What a crazy, crazy transfer window. It was very busy. Let's roll the intro, look at the transfers, and get into today's matches. <laughs> Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. This is episode 51, Football Manager 21, our Dutch Netherlands save with the Graf Shop. And uh, we are doing our damnedest to uh, finally achieve some goals of becoming one of the top clubs in the Netherlands and knocking some of those big boys off of their pedestal. Remember, if you like what you see, please smash that like button for me. It's how you can support the channel, get more eyes on the videos. Much appreciated. Also, subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell for reminders for daily Football Manager content Monday through Saturday here on the channel. Taking a look at scores since the last match, uh, we beat NEC 2-0, Cervenka and Gerver with goals. Gerver's goal came not from a penalty this time, but it did come from a set piece. Uh, Villem 2, we, we knocked them out 1-0. Kernjik with a late winner in the 86th minute. This was huge because Villem is in third position uh, behind us in the table, so that opens up a little bit of breathing room. And then a uh, yeah, yeah, we beat Groningen seven nil. Uh, <laughs> Gerver another set piece goal. Javich, Cervenka, Resnick, Aaron, Muller, and Profit with the goals. Nobody getting more than one, but quite a few players finding their way onto the score sheet in that one. Today's episode, we're going to have highlights against Sparta, and then we'll play Breda in the Dutch Cup quarterfinal here on camera. I did come back just a touch early, so we could jump into those transfers. We take a look at finances. We're sitting on $15.5 million in our transfer budget. Uh, we've got a little under $400,000 per month left in the wage bill. And, uh, yeah... That's where we're at. But let's take a look at the actual transfers. Melvin Gerber is not leaving. We got a lot of offers from uh, from teams for him, some big clubs, uh, but nobody came in and met his release clause. Nobody even came in at half of his release clause. So I wasn't in a hurry to trade him or to sell him. Uh, he did you know, come back at the end that he was disappointed in not moving, but he understood uh, why that he appreciated that we made the effort and he's happy to stick it out till next window. So he is going to want to leave unless maybe we can win silverware. We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, taking a look, you can see we have had quite a few people out the door. I believe Jaspers was the last guy we looked at. Uh, Trifon Satiropoulos goes off for two hundred and seventy-five thousand. Uh, he was a young player, seventeen in our youth system. Uh, Dirk Van Beckel goes off to Breda for four and a half million. I would have liked to have kept him, but he just wanted he wanted to play more. He was twenty-seven, so uh, you know we bought him for two point two last year, selling for four and a half. Nice little profit. And sometimes you just have to do that. Uh, Neck Meyer goes off to PSG. They had come in and offered like like four and six million on him. Thirteen and a quarter was his release clause. Twenty years old, seventeen caps for Slovenia. But uh, and I like him. He looks really good. But I mean, if we look at him, I mean, he played a six seven. And only had four assists, no goals. Never really, never really looked great. And then we had uh, we had Momsilovich come in and made him expendable. We saw Momsilovich on his debut last episode. So thirteen and a quarter million for Meyer. Marco Span, one of our younger players, eighteen-year-old Dutch player, goes off to Eindhoven for one seventy-five. Jerry Benat, one of our young Semi-talented goalkeepers uh, picks up a million dollars from Go Ahead and Adelang 
goes to Zwoll for 375. Another young player. We got real busy. Transfer deadline day was pretty hectic, or the last the last 24 hours. Uh, we bring in Timo De Beer. Let's take a look at these guys one at a time. Timo De Beer, Beer uh, cost us six million total from Vitesse, a 19 year old center back. He was brought in to replace Van Beckel and also just to hedge our bets against Gerver leaving. So he's valued at 3.4, four and a half star potential, and we pay 4.3, a little over his value. But, you know, that's kind of normal for a quality player. And uh, you can see uh, he was on loan with Heracles in the second division, uh, played a 7.14. So we'll see if he can make the step up. But, again, young player, I think we've got time to develop him. Martin Vanderhorst from Ajax cost us $1.7 million. He is a 19-year-old, uh, capped at the U19 for the Netherlands. And uh, he is a number 10. He can play in that shadow striker role. Finishing's not great, but he's got really good first touch, passing. Uh, I do like a lot of his mentals. And I don't think it to play that number 10, you've got to be the paciest guy. But he's got good work rate, uh, off the ball movement. He can pass. So he gives us another option there. Four and a half star potential. Happy to bring him in. And then uh, then it just got fast and furious. Martin Check comes in from Al Hazim for $2.8 million. So he comes in. Uh, he can play the number 10, but he's a central midfielder. He was a, a signee for uh, Meyer. A uh, little older than I like to sign, but 27, still in his prime. Five foot ten, solid physicals, uh, dribbling, first touch. He can actually take long shots, so edge of the box. And in this tactic, we see a lot of shots from the edge of the penalty area. Um, passing is very good, and then he has really good mentals as well. So hopefully he can do the job. Uh, Peter Visick from Ajax cost us 2.7. He's 19 years old, three, uh, two U21 caps for Czechoslovakia, four and a half star potential, another midfielder. He could move up to that number 10 if we need him to. 16 passing, and uh, I think this is going to be my actual replacement for Meyer. Ishan Babel from Vitesse cost us $1.1 million. He's a 16-year-old striker. I had mentioned I wanted a striker. I had a couple of offers out. We had one offer that was serious, but they wanted to sign a replacement first, and unfortunately they couldn't get it done, couldn't find anybody. Uh, it would have been a pretty big money deal for us. Uh, I think it was somewhere in about the 6 dollars to $8 million range. But anyway, five-star potential, already 14 finishing. I can see this kid starting for us right now, possibly. Uh, definitely needs to develop some, but I think he's good enough to be in the rotation, if nothing else. And then uh, Tio Ribicic from Hajduk for 235000 18-year-old Croatian Left winger just needed that's a position we're a little light at. Cervinka's playing out there and he's doing a good job, but I, you know, couldn't find anybody really talented. He is left footed, very pacey, decent crosser. I think he's going to challenge for playing time. So I'm interested to see what some of these guys can do. Taking a look at the competition, we are currently one point ahead of Haravine, top of the table. We Oh, top of the league and uh, looking really good. We are 10 points clear of AZ for that final uh, European spot. And it's the Champions League group stage for the top two. So that is what I would love to shoot for. And we are eight points clear of Vitesse for Champions League next year. So that's huge, huge. So... Um, I have started seeing some comments from you guys. Uh, old lady plays, keep playing as long as you're having fun. I get that, but you know, it's also a realistic thing that if you want, you know, once you get 50, 100 episodes in, you, you know, 
you just start dropping off viewers and I don't have the viewers to bleed out in the first place. Now, luckily, I don't really bleed off. I'm pretty consistent. So it means you guys are sticking with it. If you were there at the beginning, you're there now. And I do appreciate that. But um, I do have a, a couple of save ideas that I would like to do. So um, we might be getting close to the end of this one. But uh, I forget who it was. It was somebody else. Let me look. Uh, it was Spaceman Extreme. Uh, I think the main objective should be to win the league. Everything else should be icing on the cake. So certainly, certainly, even if we win the league this year, if we qualify for Champions League, I think we've got to come back one more year to do Champions League. I think I would be insane not to do that. Um, so even if we finish, even if we win the league, We'll be back one more season for Champions League, but then that might be it. But anyway, we'll play that by ear. Uh, we do have highlights for against Sparta coming up, and then Breda. Let me get Sparta played, and we'll check that out right now. Pretty attacking setup by Sparta, 4-2-3-1. And it was a pretty exciting affair. Low, low scoring for us. Uh, Cervenka gets it into the paint, and Kernjik with the header rare header goal and uh, into the paint if you're not familiar is more of a basketball term uh, when you're right inside near the basket and Vicario off the bench in the 85th minute and he takes the pass and buries it and of course in stoppage time we leave De Groot open at the edge of the box Muller can't mark him down and they get the late goal in the 93rd minute to make it two to one but it is still a victory and that gives us an additional advantage. Plus 40 on the goal differential. I'm still amazed uh, that we had, what was it last in, uh, I think it was my other save last uh, with Lester in that championship season. I think we were at a plus 125 or something like that. It was, it was an astounding goal differential. Uh, I was very, very happy with that. But uh, and that was the same tactic we were using in this save. The uh, what was it? The four two 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 with uh, two attacking wingers, but just not getting the results with either Lester or De Grafschap with that at at the higher levels. Once we went up to the Premier, uh, struggled a little bit and. Uh, changed over to this same tactic. And that's why I started using it here because I was seeing some good results. All right, well, let's get up to the next match and we will check that out and think we might have a 16 year old debut in that one. Well, we had a long talk with our assistant manager. Uh, we were discussing, uh, you know, how some of the new players were gonna fit in and our young striker, he said, I just think he's going to be overmatched right now at 16. Let's put him into the U18s, give him some game time. Uh, he'll probably start down there and uh, see if we can develop him a little bit before he makes the jump. I know, I was looking forward to it too, but I said, you know, God dog it, assistant manager, that makes sense. So, um, so we let him talk us into it. Uh, but uh, in the match today, we are going, and this is the Dutch Cup against Breda. We got the, I think Breda is in the, yep, they're in the second division. So out of the final eight teams, they were the only second division team left. So we got a really good draw here. Uh, we're going to go with Kaiser in goal, Gerver, Dimitrovic, Kurdov in the back line, Cervenka and DeVos on the wings, Momsilovic and Grutunk in the middle, Javic in the number 10, Kernjik and Resnick up top. Let's get to it. We are going to have two players. Now, these two were in the B team, Vanderhorst and De Beer. Uh, when we signed them, they're going to come up. And De Beer draws number four. Good on him. I wonder if that was, I don't remember. I don't remember numbers and stuff for, for these guys. Uh, I wonder if that was Nick Myers' uh, jersey. Might have been. Might have been. Because it's odd to have a low number like that. So what do you guys think of the signings? Let me know in the comments below. Certainly would appreciate hearing from you. And give me your thoughts. Let me know who you think is going to be 
worth anything, who's going to be a bust out. Hopefully nobody. But uh, anyway, let me know. And I am definitely just looking forward to seeing them, how they fit in. All right, that one's knocked away from Kernjit. Grutung finds Resnick, but he can't spot the finish. And you know, last year, year before, that would have been one that Vicario put into the back of the net. Just been off there, off the mark this year. Just neither one of them looking, looking really good. Oh, that was a good pass through. Who's down there? Hey, girl. It's, uh, if you saw last episode, so this is uh, my bulk recording weekend, uh, typical, but um, it was Insomnia Sunday recording, and uh, I've been recording and playing since uh, at like 3.45, and it's uh, we're at 6.30 now, so... <laughs> At some point, I'll probably go lay in my recliner and take a nap. Sorry. But that's why if you do see me yawning, it's uh, not you boring me, me trying not to bore you. <laughs> All right. Come on, boys. We need to do a little bit better here. There's Kernjik, and he beats the keeper at the near post. Is there an offsides? Going to VAR, that means they're going to call it back. Disallowed. Ay, ay. I don't think it was Kernjik that was offsides. Yeah, yeah, he was. I thought, oh, it was Van Beckel, our old player, making his uh, making a start for his new club over there. Played both of our strikers offsides. Good play by Van Beckel. Can't, uh, can't be mad at him for doing his job. Oh, hello. Bose goes down twice. Not sure what that was all about. That's, that's a poor pass. What the hell is that? We are not looking clinical with our passing like we have been. And as soon as I say that, we start stringing some passes together here. Very nice. Come on. Oh, there he spots Devos out there in, on the wing. Crossed in, and Jazvich gets his fifth of the season. And that one counts. We're up 1-0. Very, very good ball work there. Got to like that. Come on. All right, Gerber on the tackle. With the block. Gerber all over it. Dervinka. He picks out a deep pass. It's Resnick into the box, and he beats the keeper. His seventh of the season, Zervenka with the long assist. Got to like that, and that makes it 2-0 in the 33rd minute. Liking that. That's a big ball from Zervenka deep in our own half of the pitch. Good. Good play. Ernchik only on a 6-6. That's, you know, we expect a little better from him. Jazvich gets the block. Kernjik tracks back to get the ball. Oh, Resnick, give him a through. Uh, no, and he crosses the keeper up. 22nd goal of the season and a cartwheel. Two goals in five minutes make it. The Graf Shop three, Breda nil. And Para has picked up an injury at some point in the process here. I think Kernjik could have played the ball across. But he felt comfortable making that shot, and he made it count. So he was evidently right, and we will congratulate him on that. Team is looking really good. Can't complain. Jazvich, a oh, nice ball into Resnick. Two touches. He slots it home. He's got a brace today, number eight on the season for him, and it's now 4-0 as we are cruising in the first half. I'm going to praise them here. That's good. We're going to have to probably jump them at halftime here about complacency. 
We'll see. Good header out. Delgado's on it, though. And we're on the run again. Over the top. Resnick beats Van Beckel. And Resnick triple goal first half. There's his hat trick, and he beats Van Beckel, and he won't even make eye contact with me on the sideline because at this point I'm like, told you not to leave, dude. You know? But that's all right. Hey, you know, sometimes they want to leave, and there's nothing you can do about it. Nine shots, seven on target, five in the back of the net. Can't complain about that at all. Our two midfielders are only playing six nines. They're, they suck. You know, Gerber's on a 6-6. Six, six. What's the deal with him, man? And we've seen him in some highlights. He's done well. I mean, we've seen him with some tackles and some blocks. I I don't know what he's doing to, to get screwed up there, but hmm. that's interesting. Cervenko's pretty tired. Let's go ahead and make a sub for him. We'll bring on uh, Profit there on the right side. Let's go ahead and give Check his debut for Momsilovich, who's also complacent. We'll have his debut coming on. Oh, Zahedrick beats Check and Gerber. Not a good first highlight there, Mr. Check. I want to be getting beaten over the top by a long ball. Oh. I don't know if that was Kurdov or Dimitrovich that uh, <laughs> that guy went right around. I think it was Kurdov. No, it was Dimitrovich. There you go. Yeah. And Evers just went around him, and then beat Kurdov as well. Wow. All right, DeVos is now tired. We're going to have to pull him off. Uh, let's drop Jazvich back into that spot, and then we can bring, you know what? Let's bring uh, Vanderhorst in for his debut. Some of these guys just need a little playing time so we can check them out. That's some tough defense. There's a good block. That's going to set up a corner. Still, DeGraff shot five, Breda one. There's the sub, Vanderhorst making his debut in the number 41 kit. Oh, my God. Check. Oh, there's the highlight we wanted from him. That was in the net, and he cleared it off the line. That was amazing. That would be a cut-in highlight at some point. That would be a neat thing for SI to add, wouldn't it? If, uh, you know, like right here, you know, where it goes to, I'm going to pause it, but where it goes to that screen that, that where there's nothing going on, if they would cut back to a highlight, that would be pretty cool. Somebody out there is going to have to tell SI about it. Please give me credit. But, because, uh, you know, not enough, S, nobody at SI watches this channel. So, <laughs> you know, they're not going to pick anything up on. All right, we're going to uh we're going to praise them again. 5 to 1. Good header, but nobody's there and then he gets beat. Uh and Ronnie Evers his 16th of the season. Kurtoff takes that one in the right right between the eyes. Uh, you know, if you head it to your own teammate, that won't happen. They actually have a better XG than we do. How crazy is that? All right, I want to go in and look at the tactic. All right, well, just wanted to peek at something, and you know, this tactic does have a few, uh, you know, a few tweaks to it that I don't usually play with, but we've been having good success with it, so I'm not going to complain. There's a header. Looks like they beat a couple of our defenders to the ball. I had gone after one of the strikers I had gone after was uh I think it was like 6'4 and he had like an 18 
jumping reach and a and a 15 header ability and i was all over it i said man i could play him up top get get some uh, you know some big headers which we don't normally have <sighs> okay he whiz all right we're going to go drop a little bit we're going to use tighter marking And we have conceded three goals in one of these late collapses yet again. Mark him up good. I think we have got one more sub to make, or have we no, we've made all all three. Vanda Horst. His first highlight. Nice ball over the top to Resnick. Crosses it and Vanderhorst makes the full pitch run, gets a toe on it, but right into the keeper's hands. Not a bad effort, though. Nice seeing the effort from him on his debut. That is some positive stuff there. Rain is falling. We've got four minutes of stoppage time. Everything's going to the other team in this one. Kaiser makes the save there. I thought that guy might have been offsides. Maybe not. And there you go, Kaiser. Fall on it. Retta fans are going crazy down there. Our fans are kind of swaying back and forth like they're about to pass out from the stress of conceding three goals again. And I can't blame him for that. It does wear on the nerves, especially when you give up a fourth goal. All right, now we've gone to a tighter marking. He's got a hat trick. Holy smokes. Come on, just get to the whistle. We've still got two minutes. Long ball over the top. Resnick's onto it. Crossed in. Oh, it's there. And Vanderhorst, his first goal on his debut. Right there to catch the deflection from the keeper. That should be the nail in the coffin. Thankfully, from 5 0 or 5 1 to 5 4 to 6 4. And Vanderhorst, right from the spot, gets to the rebound off the deflection from the keeper. And we're back for another kickoff highlight. Hopefully this just gets us to the final whistle. Come on, boys. Flick on header. Oh, my God. Get to the ball. <laughs> oh, Vanderhorst again. What can he do? What can he do? Oh, he crosses him up, and he's got a brace in his debut. Oh, man. Two-minute brace on a debut. I don't think I've ever seen that. I mean, I've seen a brace on a debut. I've seen maybe a hat trick on a debut, but not a brace in a two-minute span. That was just insane. And they still end up with a better XG than we do. That was crazy. So... 5-1 to 5-4 to 7-4. Uh, I'm, yeah, we'll go ahead and praise him here. That was crazy. So Resnick with a first half hat trick. Vanderhorst with a stoppage time brace. I've seen just about everything now. We win in the quarterfinal. We get a million dollars for that. Resnick, three goals and an assist. We'll congratulate that. Dimitrovich will be suspended for cup competitions in the semifinal. That's disappointing. The, the draw uh, last time came within like a day or two. So let's just advance here a, a day or two and see if we can get to the draw. New gate receipt record, 625,000. 
uh, the, breaking the previous record of 600,000. That's good. Well, I agree. He is a star player for us. Gruntuk is still starting, and Kernjik, I'm not going to demote him. I don't want him getting upset. Because we just gave him a new contract to stay. Because <laughs> he was really our only scoring threat. All right, here's the semifinal draw. So we have Ajax, Vitesse, uh, Feyenoord, Rotterdam, Sparta, Rotterdam, and our club uh, into the hat for the two matches to be drawn. Somebody hasn't played yet. All right, so we are at home, and we draw Feyenoord. And then Ajax will take on Sparta. All right. Feyenoord's currently eighth. That is a winnable match. When does that take place? That is real soon. That's kind of quick to come back, though. What I might do, what I might do, is go ahead and come back for that, for the highlights. We'll just show highlights. And then we'll see what happens there if we win or not. And then, you know, I'm sure the Dutch Cup final is going to be the last match of the season, right? So we would have to do the highlights here and then maybe come back somewhere around Ajax to Willem for that and then come back for Fortuna highlights with the cup final. That would be my thought. Uh, of course, you know, I was really only planning two more episodes total counting this one for the season, but a silverware run, a run at silverware, kind of takes a precedent, and I think that was a very good match to watch. Hit that like button for me. I think it was exciting and worth it. And I hope you guys were excited by it as I was. Uh, subscribe if you're new. And don't forget, Daily Football Manager content Monday through Saturday. So make sure you check out tomorrow's episode. And then this one will be back in two days. Take care. Bye.